before we get anywhere near the actual topic, right, what you need to understand is that one of the most um, favorite and powerful things that mathematicians do is they take an object, right, and they like to look at it from multiple angles, right? Good morning, come in, okay? Take the same object, look at it from a different perspective, right, and it's heads, tails, but it's the one thing, right? So when you look at it in different ways, you gain insight and it unlocks different, go that way, it unlocks different pro kinds of problems that you can solve if you can understand these different ways. So what I want to do is connect you back to good morning, uh, what we were looking at when we were talking about functions. We looked at a whole bunch of different ideas in functions, but in many ways, what we were looking at there was kind of a warm up for this. Okay? Now, what does a function do? Right? The essential idea is it takes an input, you put the input, well, because it's an input, you put the input in, and what you'll get is an output, right? Now we tended to name the input x, the dependent variable, and we tended to name the output, um, sorry, the independent variable, we tended to name the output y, right? So that's what you get out. All right, we're used to this, okay? But one of the most important last ideas that we looked at in functions was this idea of an inverse function. Do you remember the inverse function? Right. The inverse function is a little bit different, but it's very closely related, as you can tell by the name, to this idea, right? An inverse function does the same thing, but backwards, right? It says, well, instead of thinking about the input, put it in, get the output. What if you could take the output, reverse engineer it, put that into the inverse function, and you should be able to get back out what you started with, okay? So that's what we did. And this idea is very simple, just algebraically. All that meant was you swapped your x's and y's because you can see we're swapping our inputs and outputs, okay? This idea of inverse functions is exactly what I'm talking about when I say you take an object and you just look at it from the other side, right? A function is looking at it in terms of inputs. Good morning. An inverse function is looking at it in terms of outputs, okay? If you want to put it another way, a function's asking the question, well, what will you get at the end? What will you get at the end? What will your answer be? Okay? Whereas an inverse function is answering the question, where did you come from? What did you start with that led you to this spot? Okay? So they're asking very different questions, looking at this object from different angles. Okay? Now the particular kind of function and inverse function we're going to be paying attention to today starts with something really, really simple. Something you learned back in like year seven and eight. Okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. This is an exponential function, an exponential function, uh, or an exponential equation. Uh, you've got an index there, which another fancy name for that is the exponent, which is why it's called the whole thing, an exponential. Okay? Now, this equation, 2 to the power of 5 equals 32, it tells a story. I've mentioned this to some of you before. Right? It tells a story of taking some inputs and getting an output. Now, the question is, what story does it tell? Okay? So what I want you to imagine is if you had a box, okay? You had a box, and everything you put in this box, okay? You just pop something in. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work because it's not a real thing. You pop it in, and if you wait some amount of time, it gets bigger, right? In fact, every minute, it doubles in size. As you can see, I'm gonna have some troubles in a minute, right? You put things in, the longer you keep them in there, the bigger they grow. Does that make sense? Now, my growing machine has this story attached to it, right? This particular story is, I'm doubling, every minute I'm doubling. So this you could call, I suppose, like a growth rate. Like, how fast are things getting bigger, right? I could have had another machine that maybe uh, tripled things every minute or quadrupled things every minute, okay? For this particular equation, it's doubling. Five is how long you've, you've kept your object in there. How long has your object been doubling? So for example, I might put my object in for five minutes, okay? Which would mean, because it doubles every minute, it's gonna double five times, once every minute. Does that make sense? So this index up here, the exponent, is time. It's how long I've kept my object in the growing box, doubling and doubling and doubling. Now, <coughs> based on that story, I wonder if you can tell me, what is the output? What is 32 in this story? What significance does that number have? The size, is it? Yeah, 32 is how big, once I, once I grab my thing out after the five minutes, this is how big it is at the end, after five minutes. In other words, I suppose I could say, this is the final size. This is where you end up, okay? So I've got inputs over here, 
And here's my output, right? If you put things in here, in my doubling machine, okay, depending on how long it's in there, I'll tell you how big it gets. Okay. Now, before we, again, before we move on to this idea, I want you to see how powerful this metaphor is. Okay? You can think about all of the index laws in terms of this growing time size metaphor. Let's think about it like this. Okay? Example, 2 to the power of 0. Okay? Now you all know with your index laws what 2 to the power of 0 is. It's 1. What story does this tell? What story does this tell? Okay. Again, I'm um, actually just for the sake of simplicity, I'm thinking about the same box every time. I've got a growth rate, it's doubling, it's doubling. How long am I putting it in the box for? I'm, I'm putting it in for no amount of time, right? So no time. So therefore, how big, what's the final size of my object? And the answer is, well, it's, it's the same size it was to begin with. It's one, it's 100% of its original size, right? As opposed to 3,200%, okay? So that's what happens if you don't actually put your object in the machine at all. How do you think about this one, right? Again, same doubling box. This is time, right? This is time. What would time of negative one indicate to you? Time of five, that's like I wait one minute, I wait two minutes, I wait three minutes, I wait four minutes, I wait five minutes, and then after that time, this is how big my thing is, right? <coughs> what does negative one mean, right? Negative one means go backwards in time, right? Like hop in your TARDIS, okay, and go, go one minute in the past, okay? And you guys know what the answer is to this, right? What do negative indices mean? What's it equal to? It's, it's a half, isn't it? You cross the line, you cross the line, you change the sign, okay? So here, why does that make sense? Because if you were a minute in the past, then back then, you were half the size you are now. Does that make sense? Because if you go backwards in time, it's not growing anymore, is it? It's shrinking. Make sense? Because it's going the other direction. Okay, one more. Have a look at this one. First, you give me the answer. You can leave it in the next one. Uh, this is 2 to the 5, isn't it? 2 to the power of 5. Okay, now what story does this tell? What story does this tell? Well, if you're doubling, and you double for 2 minutes, right? Then you double, and you double for another 3 minutes, right? Well, doubling for 2 minutes, and doubling for three minutes, that's exactly the same as doubling for five minutes. Like you might as well have hit five on the machine and just let it go, rather than doing it in two hits. Does that make sense? Do you see that what we're adding up here is time? That's why two squared times two cubed, why this multiplication turns into addition. Okay, does that make sense? So I've got a whole new like metaphor for picturing what this equation is telling me, all right? Now you're ready to meet logarithms.